Good morning everyone. Today we are going to discuss seizure and the first thing you need to know is that seizure and epilepsy are two different things. Epilepsy is a recurring seizure due to any underlying process while seizure is a one time event. By definition in Harrison's it is given that an epilepsy is more than two unprovoked seizure. By unprovoked we mean that seizures can be provoked in people by video games or flashing lights. So let's get right into it. Seizure is of two types focal and generalized. Focal involves one hemisphere while generalized involves both the hemispheres. Focal seizures originate from either the medial temporal lobe or the inferior frontal lobe. Now there are three types of focal seizures. There are intact awareness, uh, impaired awareness and focal to generalized seizures. Also I need you to know that terms like partial seizure, simple focal seizure, complex focal seizure are no longer used. Then in generalized seizures we have typical absence, then atypical absence, then generalized tonic-clonic seizure, atonic seizure, myoclonic seizure and last of all epileptic spasm. Now let's discuss the focal onset seizures. In focal onset seizures the EEG in the interictal period which means between seizures we have normal or epileptiform spike or a sharp wave. So in intact awareness we have first of all the Jacksonian march. Here the contractions begin from fingers and then they uh, go on to the entire arm. So they move from one little point of the extremity and then they progress forward. Now we also have Todd's paralysis which is characteristic. This is a weakness of the involved region. And last of all we have epilepsia partialis continua which means that the seizure will go on for days though this is rare. Also aura is present and we will now differentiate it from impaired awareness where we have the characteristic automatism. These are small movements like the person will do lip smacking or they will do very subtle movements again and again. Here also we have aura but we will have confusion here which was not the case in intact awareness. Anterograde amnesia will also be present and aphasia with visual loss may also be found. Then we will move on to the third and last focal seizure which is focal to generalized tonic-clonic seizure. It is important for us to differentiate this seizure from primary generalized tonic-clonic seizure as the treatment is different. Let's move on to generalized seizure. First of all we have the typical absent seizure which is seen in 4 to 10 year olds and here we see a sudden loss of consciousness which is not the case in atypical where the loss of consciousness is less abrupt. Then we have the postural control is present. Please remember this. This is imp important in differentiating the various uh, seizures in generalized category. Confusion is absent in typical absence seizure. Then we have the characteristic blinking of eyelids and chewing and since this is seen in a child the teacher will often complain of daydreaming and also the performance of the child will decrease with time let's move on to atypical uh, atypical okay and one last thing eeg in a absence seizure will be a typical three hertz spike and slow wave pattern which will begin and end suddenly and also to get such an EEG we generally hyperventilate the patient after which we get such pattern if he or she has absence seizure. In atypical absence seizure the EEG will have a frequency of less than 2.5 hertz which will help us differentiate it from typical absence seizure and also it will be associated with mental retardation. Also, if you try to treat atypical absence seizure with the medication for absence seizure, it will not respond. So that is another important differentiating factor. Let's move on to generalized tonic-clonic seizure. The word tonic comes first, so and then we will have clonic phase. The tonic phase will have sustained contraction of muscles which will involve the expiratory muscles and the laryngeal 
muscles which will give rise to a characteristic ictal cry and the respiratory muscles will also contract so that will give rise to cyanosis and the jaw muscles will on contraction will lead to biting of the tongue let's move on to the clonic phase uh, in the tonic phase muscle muscles will contract but in the clonic phase the muscle will relax so such a pattern will give rise to the clonic phase then after the seizure has occurred both the phases have occurred then post ictly we will see confusion confusion is a very important term and you must remember it for all seizure types then we will also have headache and muscle ache because of the sustained contraction the eeg will move forward from a high amplitude polyspike discharge during the tonic phase to a spike and slow wave pattern in the clonic phase let's move on to the atonic and myoclonic phases in atonic phase atonic means no tone so uh, muscle tone will be lost as a result no postural control will be present and the patient will fall if the myoclonus is very severe a differentiating factor is that postictal confusion will be absent whereas it is present in gtcs now in myoclonic the only thing you need to know is that it is seen in juvenile myoclonic epilepsy and we will move on to the last of the epileptic spasms which is characteristically seen in infants uh, here the muscles uh, preferably the proximal muscles they flex and or extend these are known as epileptic spasms and in the emg electromyogram we will see a rhomboid pattern which is uh, very characteristic and it will help us differentiate epileptic spasm from uh, atonic and myoclonic seizure last of all we have the epilepsy syndromes and here we discuss juvenile myoclonic epilepsy uh, lennox gastroc syndrome and mesial temporal lobe epilepsy let's discuss the most important points first in jme the patient will be in early adolescent stage while lennox gastroc is seen in children in jme the myoclonic jerks will be seen upon a, my, a morning awakening and or sleep deprivation while uh, the consciousness will be present in juvenile myoclonic epilepsy and the patient will have gtcs and one third patients will have absence a family history will be seen you have to remember this in jme a family history is seen i don't know how much i can highlight this but this is very important a family history will be seen and lennox gastroc it has a very poor prognosis mainly because of the reason uh, we have a triad here uh, which consists of multiple seizures gtcs atonic and atypical absence seizure will be seen then eeg of less than 3 hertz frequency will be seen with a slow spike and wave pattern and impaired cognition this forms the triad of lennox gastroc syndrome and in mesial temporal lobe epilepsy the consciousness is absent which makes it uh, uh, which is a differentiating factor from jme in which consciousness is present now uh, in mtle uh, the if you see the mri it will have the very characteristic hippocampal sclerosis and it is very important for you to see the mri because if you uh, detect uh, mtle quick uh, we can do a surgery because there is no treatment available only surgical options are available I, last of all i would like you to check the table for mtle it is given in harrison that has a lot of info regarding the history of the patient i didn't discuss that here because it has been given in a very nice way in the book so please check it out now let's have a look at some images this is an image of a inter ictal eeg where you can see that some eegs are very normal like see this f7 average eeg this has very few spikes and waves and most of all it is completely normal eeg rhythms while if you have a look at the t4 average you will see there are a lot of waves throughout and some giant ones right here and they keep on showing spikes and sharp waves uh, so we know this is an interictal eeg and t4 average waves are highly indicative that the person has had a seizure 
now let's move on to this one this here is an eeg of a focal seizure if you look here you will see the characteristic spike wave see this this is the spike this is the spike this is the wave and this is the spike this is the wave this is the spike and this is the wave as you can see the spikes are lesser in amplitude compared to the waves and that is completely normal another examples are here this is the spike and this this whole thing is the wave you can see this across this entire spectrum the spike and the wave so this is indicative of a focal seizure and last of all we have this mri this image has been taken from harrison's and as you can see that there is a sclerosis in the hippocampus and this is the characteristic hippocampal sclerosis you will see in mtle mesial temporal lobe epilepsy and this is the pathognomic structure as has been shown by the arrow that is all i hope this was useful thank you